Good morning, guys. How are you? How are you? Um, I don't normally jump on and do morning videos. Y'all can tell. Um, it's almost time for a good work day. Science teacher is about to go to work. But um, I saw a couple of posts last night. And I've actually seen a few the last couple of days. And I saw a few responses, but not too many. And I just have to put this out here, y'all, before I go to work. It is on my little teacher spirit. I'm going to warn you guys, and this is something that I learned. This is, um, I'm going into my second year of candle making. I went into retail about six months after I started pouring. And I had tested candles for two or three months and really got into candle making for two reasons. Number one, I love buying candles. I love the aroma of them, the scents, the carriage, the packaging. It was just something about it I really enjoyed. But number two, I wanted to just figure out how do things work. So... A young lady reached out to me last night, one of the newbies. She just started pouring. She is about three weeks in. And so far, she has probably easily spent about $1,000. In candle making world, I'm going to be honest with y'all, $1,000 is a lot of money, especially for someone who is not in retail, does not have a client base. Um, this is not a website building, marketing. Y'all, this is all product. So warning. Okay, warning from Shandria, warning from BCJ Decor. Be careful. Be careful that you don't get caught up. You do not have to start with 50 fragrances. You don't. I started with five. I asked about what are the top five people recommended, and I always heard you should have two classics. So I had a buttercream, I think, I think I take that back, vanilla buttercream and my apple cinnamon were my two classic scents. Because it was always recommended you have something in the vanilla family and something in the fruit family. And then I picked like Moon Sparkle and I had two guy fragrances, a sage and eucalyptus. And I can't even remember, honestly, the fifth one. And I stuck with those five the first six months. I did craft shows. Um, I started my retail space with only those five fragrances, pouring an eight ounce, a four ounce and a wax melt. Um, and my pricing has actually increased. It's actually doubled in the last year. So if you guys want to talk pricing, I have no problem with that. If you want to talk supplies, I have no problem with that either. But you don't have to purchase $100, $200 Presto Pots, which when she says she purchased a $200 Presto Pot, and I'm like, wow, how big is that pot? How much wax are you pouring at a time? Keep in mind, she's only been pouring for three weeks, three weeks, and huge, huge Presto Pot. There's no way. There's no need, okay? Um, secondly, if I have not worked with a wax, y'all, don't buy a case of wax. Do not run out and buy 45, 55 pounds of wax because that's the other thing. She's bought three different cases of wax. I buy cases of wax, and right now my case is about $90 per, per, per box. And I did not move up to boxes until I knew I had the wax I was going to stick with. And many of us, those of us who've been pouring for a while, you will hear people talk about pillar wax, palm feather wax, soy, soy blends, 100% paraffin, beeswax, coconut, almond. There are so many options and choices. You don't have to do them all, but you probably want to try two or three of those before you commit. Buy a slab of wax. It's 10 pounds of wax or a small, whatever small bag they usually carry. And if you can, try to go to a candle supply store that's in your local area. If you are in a metropolitan area, I'm close to Dallas. My candle supply area is in Mesquite. Y'all, I drive because shipping wax is ridiculous. Shipping will cost as much as the wax. So you've got to be careful about that. If you live in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arizona, all my southern southwest states, you've got to be careful because we're coming to the part of the year, it gets hot. You have to think about what's going to happen to their product after it leaves your door, especially when you're looking at shipping. So this is the time of year you start looking into, hey, if I get an order in June in Texas, it's 100 and some degrees, y'all. This wax is going to lean. It's going to move. Fragrance oils will shift. So be careful. Do your research. Start asking those questions in advance because I guarantee it's probably something you have not um, thought about. The next thing I noticed, some of us are still in the testing phase. For example, I don't usually make decorative candles and I've started putting 
the little, I forgot what you call the fruits because they have official names, but all the little decorative wax fruits and pieces at the top. You need to test your product. Um, I saw a young lady that said she doesn't test anything. She pours it. If it's flat top, it looks good. She sends it out. She's been pouring for less than a month and she, she was on her fifth customer complaints. So she's actually been moving inventory, but she started getting complaints about tunneling. She started getting complaints about the appearance, the frosting, and it was things that she needed a way to go back and explain it to her client because they weren't understanding. And at her price point, she's sitting at about $15 for an eight ounce candle. At that price point, $15 and up, $25 and up, people are going to have different expectations. I'm very honest. I do not do 100% wax. I mean, sorry, 100% soy candles. Soy is finicky for me. And I am one of those crafters. I have multiple crafts going at a time. So for me to keep up with soy, the temperature, the I'm, I'm very, very honest. Um, the third comment I saw last night was a young lady trying to make a sale. She had a client that was looking for a 100% soy candle. Um, she, like many of us, uses a soy blend. She convinced the client to purchase the candle. And of course, if you're a candle burner, when you burn it, you snuff it out, you can sometimes smell the difference. And she actually sold to someone who she didn't know was a candle maker. So when they got the candle home, they burned it, snuffed it out. They knew it was not 100% soy. Don't be, dis don't be dishonest with your brand. Be mindful of that because people do not forget and you have some clients and customers that are extremely dedicated to letting everyone know that you have said something that wasn't true. I don't present a product that I'm not proud of. I don't put out a product I have not tested myself. You were talking to the person, guys, I had three candles going last night, walked off to do something else, came back, and my fire detector, you know, my fire alarm is going off. And the first thing I'm thinking is, I was testing candles, what happened? Well, I had two wick... Um, two wooden wicks side by side that created a super flame. It's something that I would much rather happen to me than happen to a client. So what I figured out is I need to wick down in that situation. And I dedicate sometimes a case of candles just to the testing phase. In the testing phase, you don't have to pour a full candle. Some people are pouring a 12 ounce jar and that's not necessary. So when you see me pour the actual jar that I'm going to put in the store, for example, I'm using 12 ounce jars. Well, I'm going to pour three of those. But if I've tested two and I'm not happy with them, I can take that jar, put it upside down in the oven over a pan and a screen, melt that wax and reuse it. Same jar, same wax, different wick, different area of the house or situation. The goal is for you to be thorough, but you don't want to be wasteful because those materials are not free. Last but not least, and then I've got to head out this door. Don't pour too much product at a time. I have a young lady who has about 10 fragrances and she's looking at starting her candle shop. Um, when she sent me a video last night, um, she has, I think last night, she poured about 250 wax melts. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, like you pour your entire line. I normally pour six wax melts of a fragrance at a time because if you do clamshells with the little display, and I can show you one. For example, this is my mahogany teak wood. Mahogany teak wood, there are six that fit in this tray. So if I'm gonna pour for my store, I'm gonna pour anywhere from six to 10 wax melts. So I have six that I can drop off and I'll keep four in inventory behind me. Guys, I run 40 fragrances and I have three of these shelves. One for wax melts, one for four ounces, and one for eight ounces. Because I don't wanna have candles that are sitting for too long, especially since some of us have extremely long cure times. The cure time on my wax is three days. It's 72 hours, so that's all I need. But I don't wanna have product that's sitting there because it's taking up space and it's not making you money. The young lady who poured the 250 wax melts, she poured about 25 of the same fragrance. Guys, 25 wax melts is a lot, all right? So, and she had even noticed that the previous batch she had done, none of them, had sold. So she was only selling like maybe one to two. But if, think about it. Who are you selling to? If you're still only selling to families and friends, be careful. You don't want to end up buying a bunch of inventory and it's not necessary. So be careful with your money. You don't have to buy every product that's out there. Do your research on your wax so that you can provide your customers with really good information that is true and that's accurate. And if you make a mistake and it's not accurate, be honest about it. 
Um, last but not least, don't create too much inventory that's not necessary. You may find in your area that one fragrance is really popular. For example, I've had two shops that were maybe 15 to 20 miles apart. In one part of the town, it is all ranches, guys, large areas. They love cowboy. They love leather. They love mahogany teak wood. They love those more manly scents, and those are really popular. At my other location, they are love spell, moon sparkles. They love the sweet and the fruity scents. You have to be careful about where you're putting your fragrances. And if you pour too many, you're going to be left with a candle or a wax mill a lot longer than you want to be. Do I recommend tarts? I pour tarts. I now use a silicone mold that's like a teddy bear, a jumbo teddy bear shape, because that way I can add that in. And that's another fragrance that I can encourage my, my client to purchase. The other thing that I tend to do when I ship is I also ship an extra sample candle. So that little leftover wax, I've learned to wick it either in a tea light or in an older jar. And I can send that with the client and say, hey, this fits your profile is something that you may like. If you have a question, let me know, guys. I'm headed to work to go educate a couple of high school kids this morning, but I'm always here. I'm Shandria with BCJ Decor. I will talk to you guys soon. Be sure to comment and let me know.